Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to go over how to convert a histogram into a probability density function. Now probability density functions kind of sound a little scary but actually you've probably seen them already in high school. The most common example that you probably ran across is the normal distribution. And you'll note that the normal distribution has this Bell kind of curve, which is pe why people quite often call it the Bell normal curve. Physics people actually quite often call it a Gaussian distribution after the famous physicist and mathematician Gauss, who actually did a lot of work with them. Um, what I've put in this graph is I've put in some dotted lines. This one is for the first standard deviation. And one of the things you might remember from high school is that the number of data that are inside this area is 68%. And here's the second standard deviation where the dots are, and 95% of all the data lie in this region. Now the thing that you might not have talked about very much in high school is what this vertical axis actually is. And that's the thing we're going to talk about how to calculate today, which is the probability density. Now the thing that makes it a probability density is that the area under the curve is actually 1. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that it goes from, you know, the bulk of the stuff goes from about 0.3 out to about 0.7, and it has a height of around 2, you know, and if you think about that, that area under this big chunk here is just about 1. Um, if you've done calculus, then this thing down here, which looks kind of scary if you haven't, um, is basically just saying in math the following. The area under the graph is equal to 1. That's all it's saying. So our task that we have is to go from a histogram of scores, right, where we have frequency, a count of the number of people who got a particular score, and convert it into a probability density where these numbers are the right scale so that the area under the probability density graph is actually 1. So let's start with the histogram of quiz scores that we worked with last time when we made a histogram of continuous data. Now what we want to do is to add a column here to our histogram table and that column is going to be scaled in a way um, that makes the probability density function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type up some headings and put them in here and here's what it looks like. So we've got um, a histogram table and I've added this column for the probability density function, PDF, nothing to do with Adobe Acrobat just a probability density function. And now what I want to do is I want to put in here a formula to scale the frequency to make a probability density P. So the way to do that is it's just equal to the value of the frequency and we need to divide by the number of samples that we took which is 16 and we also need to divide by the width of the bin which in this case was 5. So I need to click on that and hit the F4 key to make it an absolute reference and then hit enter and of course that doesn't look very useful because it's just zero so I'm going to double click and fill in the whole table and what we can then do is talk about how to get this graph to be a probability density function graph so one way to do that is to just click on the graph go control C to copy it then I'm going to move it across out of, out of the way and I'm going to click here and paste in a fresh copy of it. So now I have another copy of the same graph and what I want to do with it is I want to change the way that the graph is being done. So if I click on the series I can go up to this blue box when I get these four arrow cursor right this four arrow cursor I can left click left 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 you know, you can't move the mouse while you're clicking. You have to left click and then you can drag. And what it does is it actually changes the series that's being plotted. So now the series that's being plotted is S versus P. So I need to change my axis label here to match that. I should really do that straight away so I don't get confused. So probability density S and if I click outside it reformats the graph. And you'll notice that the X axis is exactly the same as what we had before but now we have a probability density. And you'll notice that if I hit delete it still updates that graph and it updates the other one over here as well. 
But what we want to do now is just double check that we're actually calculating a probability density. So what I want to do is remind you that each one of these steps, so like this point here at 30, 30 is, let's just drag that over there, 30 is, here we go, 007, yay, James Bond would be proud of us. Okay, so 007 goes with 30, there's the 30, and 25 also has the same value. So we've got in this column, we've got two values for each um, frequency, right? So what we need to do if we're going to check that this probability density is working correctly, we need to take a sum, and one way to do that is to use, I need the ribbon back, so that's what I did here, I got it back by clicking on the little arrow, and I can click on sum, and what sum does is it takes a sum of all those numbers, so let's just see what that is. Okay, it's 0.4. Well, that's not what we actually want. What we want to do is calculate the area under the graph. So each of the values of the steps has, let's put that over there so we can see it, each that each step has a width of 5 and a height given by the value in the table. So we need to multiply this thing by 5 to make it the area under the rectangle. So let's multiply by 5 and you'll notice I get a value of 2. But the value of 2 is because each value, right, so here's our one at 25 and 30, there are two values that have that number. So I need to divide this thing by 2. So click here and divide by 2 just to check and to be really cool we can format it, do cell style and we can put total here so our total probability density when we add up the area of all the rectangles is in fact 1. So we've successfully converted a histogram into a probability density function. So what I'll do is I'll post a copy of this spreadsheet on the website for this project um, at circle4.com slash biophysics and what you should do is look for the videos link up near the top of the page.